Hello and good morning to the Think Bamboo podcast. Uh, I'm your host, JJ. Today, we're here with Thomas Kirinian from Bamboo, Uganda. Hello, Thomas. Hi, JJ. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. How are you? How is everything? And um, let's let's get into um, what Bamboo, Uganda is doing and um, how you how how you started this journey because i mean it's it's really uh, i think it's very interesting so um please <laughs> we have yeah, about so first of all i'm doing very fine all is going well okay. um we uh how we started this journey yeah um basically i i arrived following my wife here in uganda uh mm -hmm. she's working for an ngo saving children and uh cool. i was looking for a job and I uh, met some random guys in a, in a bar uh, who were planning a meeting uh, on, on, on bamboo. And I was looking for some uh, interesting, I mean, like a new adventure. Um, I did some startups in the past and I got very much triggered by uh, this idea. So I joined that meeting and it was basically a very first meeting in which some bamboo enthusiasts um, were sitting together to see how to push the whole bamboo value chain in Uganda. And so there was uh, someone, an agronomer present, um, who, uh, yeah, who already had a nursery for three years of bamboo seedlings. And helps. Um, there was an architect uh, in, in uh, working with environmental construction uh, who wanted to focus more on, on, on bamboo, uh, but was looking for more supply and quality supply and, 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 and so on, and kind of a processing facility to deliver uh more products to him um and yeah there was an environmental analyst and there was a financial guy who had a passion for bamboo and so it was an interesting group of people um and uh yeah i i said like yeah i i would love to put my my shoulders on it uh and dedicate my time to try and push the whole bamboo value chain and what we identified was the main gap was a, a processing facility basically mm, that was um, missing that was missing that was missing, yeah. um, because it's a bit of a chicken and the egg situation in uganda like there's not a lot of bamboo there, there's quite a lot of indigenous bamboo but it's all in natural reserves so it's not you uh, can't touch it not accessible for commercial use yeah um and there were some small uh plantations uh but yeah it's, it's hard for an industry to start if there's limited bamboo. That's one thing. But at the other hand, people are not willing to plant in Uganda if there's no market. So how, how do you get out of that, 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 that law? So, yeah, so we decided let's start with, uh, we identified, we first mapped out uh, what was there. Uh, and we, we, we saw that there was just enough to, to justify a small processing facility in which we could really start, uh, yeah, to start. Um, experimenting and start to make, try and make quality products and see how everything works and identify the right machines and all that and uh, and that's what we did. Um, and that was how how long ago, um, more or less, to get an idea? Yeah, so that meeting that was about two years ago. Um, about then, yeah, the first year it's a lot of searching and investigating, feasibility study and all that. Uh, and I think it's now about a year ago that we registered the processing facility uh, and that we, yeah, so then we did, uh, we rented a place, we did some construction, uh, we ordered the machines and the machines came in at the end of September, beginning of October. So it's very, very young. But you guys um, are advancing with fast speed. I mean, this is not Europe or the US. You guys are located in Africa. So uh, this is quite the... Quite an advance. I mean, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, amazing. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, it's it's and and it's it's quite interesting because well, what we founded basically because we we had already some existing companies. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like an umbrella organization which is called Bamboo Uganda, mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a non for profit, uh, or we see it as a social business actually. Mm -hmm. All okay. the, all the profit that we make will be reinvested in pushing the bamboo value chain. And the idea is to maximize the economic, environmental, and social impact of that whole value, value chain. That's... And then underneath the umbrella organization, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and I'm like the head of that umbrella organization, try to push everything. And then underneath you have like, uh, at the moment, 
yeah, three and a half companies. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, a plantation uh, plantation services and nursery. That's one mm -hmm. component. Yeah. Uh, then we have the processing facility, which is another uh, business on itself. And then we have the construction, uh, which is an, a third business um, underneath. And then we are now, uh, yeah, really setting up like a carbon credit component as well. Uh, that will be the fourth company then, or the fourth like... Yeah, uh, that, would be the, that would be the fourth company. Fantastic. And I'm also working on, a, on an agroforestry kind of uh, model, but that goes a bit beyond the scope of only bamboo. Um, so there's some other people working on that, uh, but that's more like a, an, an enabling model. It's like a service provided between smallholder farmers and all kinds of buyers in order to share logistics, in order to, uh, to share logistics and, 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 and support to, to those farmers. Um, to, Maybe we have... Sorry, yeah. maybe we have to explain that one of the biggest challenges within the bamboo industry is really like to enable or create this value chain because it doesn't exist. You start like from scratch. There is nothing. There is maybe one or two bamboos and people are like, oh, maybe, I don't know, where's the money, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think you guys are, are, are very um, aware of that, it seems, because you're tackling it on like, several uh, layers and they have a very interesting setup with this umbrella organization and um yeah i'm happy we can talk here and share a little bit of what you guys are doing and how you're doing it because uh, you're advancing well i mean i mean that means uh, you're doing something right <laughs> at the, <laughs> the moment for sure um we have um, another um, like um, um, topic where we could dive into, which is a little bit more maybe um, to um, talk about the bamboo planting at the nursery. Um, you mentioned earlier um, you have like five fifty fifty thousand seedlings um, like in the nursery. Is that um, still, or is this already like more? Or <laughs> no, 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 no. We have about that 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 amount. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a serious uh, amount of of seedlings. I mean, this is this takes a lot of space and uh, manpower, and uh, it's like fifty thousand babies, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. But what we what we really need as well is really to to scale up plantations. Um, mm -hmm. In order to make our business really viable in in the longer run, we we really need to scale up and 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 have like a proper uh proper base at the moment there's very limited really very limited uh bamboo and so you, yeah. when you say plantations is you need the seedlings and then you need like the place where to plant it and like have a contract with the landowners or or you you rent it or you buy it whatever set up right well the thing is we are <laughs> uganda is is quite of a particular situation in the sense that there's there's a lot of land that is quite of still available or mm -hmm. there's a lot of landowners that um that that are looking for interesting crops that don't need necessarily a lot of maintenance uh, and and gives a, a a good return on investment mm -hmm. and that is not too expensive to invest in as well and and, and actually bamboo kind of ticks all of that boxes um so and there there has been there's also a 10-year strategy from the government to push it so there is like there's so many things you can do with bamboo as well from a plantation perspective you know it's, absolutely it's like erosion control it's like all these kind of things so we yeah. are we are not um there's uh, and that that's all on the positive side on the negative side there's a lot of land conflicts in uganda um, um and, okay and that's a challenge kind of registration systems which makes it uh, which makes it quite complicated so the bureaucratic so uh, hurdle is again very high right so? the bureaucratic like uh, challenge is is very high for for whatever uh, you want to do there probably <laughs> yeah but we we feel there's enough interest uh, from landowners uh, and we are now getting more and more contracts of landowners that are interested mm -hmm. and that are actually just doing it on their own so we mm -hmm. offer the plantation services and we mm -hmm. offer the seedlings but we kind of uh, try to convince people to plant it for us and then we just make a contract that we will take off uh, their poles. That's win-win. Yeah, that's win-win. 
And that's how we look at it. And that's how we're doing it at the moment. And then at the other side, I'm really looking into, because yeah, our aim is to maximize the, the try and maximize the environmental and social impact. And when you look at, at Uganda, there's also a lot of smallholder farmers. Mm -hmm. And we are actually working on, a, on an agroforestry model um, our agronomer is really convinced of a model where coffee and bamboo grow very well together. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the shade? Have, because of the shade, because of the root structure that retains a lot of water, so it can uh, it can cover larger periods of drought uh, and these kind of issues. And and coffee is coming under, because of climate change, Big coffee stress. is coming under pressure. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. Absolutely. And we are really looking in into... Um, yeah, in, in, into that kind of, of solution. That's um, really we've also smart. Noticed, yeah, but yeah. we've noticed that you need a lot, you need to train those farmers. They need to uh, do proper plantation management. They need to get the right inputs uh, to aggregate the poles uh, in order to make it economically viable. viable. Need, they need to aggregate poles and so on. So we, you need like a whole kind of support system that cannot only be uh, organized by bamboo. It needs mm -hmm. to be organized by the coffee, the bamboo, and all the other crops that come into that agroforestry model. And that's something that we are now developing before we want to, yeah, of course, go to the farmers and present this as a, as a, as a viable solution. But if you look at the size of the coffee business here, and we only mm -hmm. take 10% exactly. of that, and we plant like five clumps or 10 clumps on every farmer's land, mm -hmm. then, then, yeah, then, then we have plenty of bamboo. That's cool because yeah, the, the coffee industry is really under pressure. They have been like moving their coffees higher and higher because of climate change. And basically in Latin America, they're already at the highest place where they can be. The temperature has risen too much and now it's really about shade coffee. So you guys are right on there, spot on. And uh, I, I think, I mean, coffee is uh, originally endemic to Africa. So it should be, we should have great coffee from Africa. So uh, that's uh, really interesting and um yeah, it's one of the largest or the largest export product of uganda as well so in that sense, oh that makes uh, totally sense you have you have already well. existing industry commodity and all that and how's the coffee in uganda and you get good coffee <laughs> Oh, we have excellent coffee. Yeah. Ah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, because the one yeah. thing is like producing the coffee, but the other is if like the 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 local people are used to or not used to to consume the coffee, then it's also a, a big difference, right? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Well, that problem is even bigger with bamboo. Like <laughs> <laughs> more of a challenge. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to take bamboo, time. Yeah. It's going to it take time. It has a time. very bad reputation in Uganda. Yeah. Um, everywhere, everywhere. But that's everywhere. part of the challenge I think uh, that we all have. And um, part also, I mean, if it's not going to take off now with the bamboo, it's it's never going to take off. We have we have the the we're, like all the the problems, there all the challenges globally now. I mean, it's really the time now. Like like timber, um, metal, all that is going like getting really expensive. So bamboo is is super viable. It's renewable. I mean, it's like I can't agree with you more. <laughs> yeah. So fantastic. Okay, that's um and and talking about the viability. Um, we also discussed um the carbon credit um approach you guys have, which is very trending right now because of uh, like a lot of um also uh, um I think uh, approaches to tackle that right and 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 see um how. Um, can the whole carbon credit be viable also economically? So um, you guys are also <laughs> also tackling that. So maybe you can share something there. Uh, is it um, you have like also to invent the wheel because there is like no existing or or like really um, systems where everybody is agreeing on some standard, right? It's not existing yet, or or is it? What's the? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> indeed, we're, we're actually trying to reinvent the wheel <laughs> okay. uh, because I think the wheel that is currently running is quite up square. Uh, it's not really running quite smoothly. Um, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I've been talking with carbon credit companies, I think, from the very onset. Uh, one of the guys on the table was also in carbon credits. He's mm -hmm. no longer with us, but he, okay. uh, that, that it was... Uh, one of the very initial uh, conversations was also on, on carbon credits. After two years, I still haven't managed to get any credit, uh, of course, and that will not surprise no one who is listening to this podcast, probably. Um, 
So um, there are some interesting companies, eh? don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, to me, it seems the scale that is needed for the current way of the, the, the system that works is, is too big. Um, the, the investment is also too large. Uh, and, and it just doesn't always, and the, there is still, and the transparency is also not always given uh, there because it's just all these complicated uh, formulas or mm -hmm. in the end, not that complicated, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, and, and, and it, it, it really made me a bit of, a bit angry, like in the sense, like, come on guys, like provide a solution. Like, uh, this is what you're doing. Provide us with a solution. I don't care, but I know one thing, and that is that everything that we are doing in this value chain is actually in somehow generating uh, carbon credits, uh, sequestering carbon, or storing it for a longer time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so what we did is like I basically started looking at what, what what is exactly going on, and 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 what are we trying to achieve with carbon credits and what are those companies doing and the only thing they're doing is actually kind of proving um that that there is a plantation and that the plantation is generating biomass and that biomass that represents carbon that's so it it's a very simple simple thing so yeah. why are we making it complex and then all this yeah but we need independent verification yeah but all those independent verifiers they're actually paid by the business that they're verifying so how yes. independent are they it's, it's um, yeah it's not at all yeah. <laughs> not exactly. at all yeah yeah and then you have those uh, yeah anyway and then <laughs> you have some court cases recently and whatever and um yeah and and, and also you discuss with those people and they know a lot about those calculations but they don't know anything about them. <laughs> that's that's the the main reason i think we we are talking here today also because like to raise awareness about bamboo what is bamboo what does it do yeah. and what can we do with bamboo because yeah. why and are then, we yeah yeah and so basically what i did is the, the, the main sort of order i think there's a very simple solution and that is again looking at the whole value chain mm -hmm. um and that is what we're currently developing with some uh we found some good investors i think we found a very good partner and we're, we're really uh moving ahead um but if you once you go into real production you you harvest every every time one one generation mm -hmm. so that means basically that that generation uh is what grew there four years ago right exactly so if you then harvest and there is an invoice then from the processing company that says i bought 20 tons of bamboo then that means that 20 tons of bamboo comes from that plantation so four years ago 20 tons of bamboo grew there and um, so basically, we're using the tax system to be not the independent verifier, because we're not going to overestimate, we're not going to say we got 20 tons of bamboo to get more carbon credit, because that just doesn't add up. Um, so the taxpayer is basically the independent verifier. And then you go to the next step and you say like, okay, we use the whole pole, because in bamboo you use the whole pole. And that mm -hmm. means that one third for the production we have, one third goes to biochar. That's an easy conversion rate. Mm -hmm. One third goes to uh, composite materials fibers. Mm -hmm. That's an easy conversion rate. And then the, the, the plywood is an easy conversion rate as well. If you count that up, that will prove that 20 tons of bamboo that was harvested is actually put into products, those three kinds of products. And then you go to the seller and then you have uh, and you have invoices along the way, which is kind of a self-verification. Proof. Yeah, that's See? a smart approach. I like it. I like yeah. it. And, yeah, and yeah. then in the, and because we want all the partners that that want to in, come in this um, want to participate on the platform, um, yeah, they we want them to give inputs on the carbon that is being lost along the process as well. So there's transport that returns to this and this and this. So meaning that this platform will be a traceability platform because you can trace it back all the way to every single plantation. It will be uh, a carbon footprint because we will try to make transparent that whole value chain. Uh, so okay. the end user can say like, this is, uh, yeah, this is the footprint of our products. And, uh, and it can also be a marketplace because as you know, like if you don't harvest the poles, they dry out, they die and carbon gets released back into the air. 
And that is something that is not yet been tackled in the whole carbon credit story. That's not talked about. Yeah, because it's, it's not wood, about. it's grass, and it's a total different yeah. management and of that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So people always look at that, uh, at like growing the bamboo, uh, because that's like the, the carbon sequestration and putting it in that forest. Mm -hmm. But but if you, if you look at it, that's only that only represents for four years. Um, because even three years, because you harvest one year. So that's, that's the carbon buildup. Uh, but then the storage you do in, in, in long-term products or in biochar is, 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 if you add that up over the lifeline of a bamboo, that is tremendous. And it's, it's a lot double. more. Yeah. And if you, and do if you bio... don't harvest it, yeah. yeah. And, and if, if you don't harvest it, it means that it's just being released in the air. So mm -hmm. making that point and making that very clear in that platform as well, I think it's, it's, it's very important to start discussing those things as well. Mm -hmm. And another interesting part then <laughs> is that it can become a marketplace because if you have like a plantation and mm -hmm. there's not yet a buyer, then we can put like, we great alert, alert, we might, we might get some carbon leakage because uh, there's plant drying out. So please yeah. need a buyer for environmental reasons. And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, probably there is enough like market to buy the bamboo just the market is not like mature enough to really think about all the use cases as added value for the bamboo. I mean, you yeah. know, aluminum, plastic, um, wood, the, the prices of all that raw material have skyrocketed. And I mean, I, I can't imagine we will have a surplus of bamboo. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. not going to happen no, soon. We, yeah. we need to plant more bamboo. That's like the first thing. <laughs> I, I can't agree with you more. And yeah. When you look at composite, yeah, I mean, when you look at composite materials and the, the yeah, the, the, the huge potential that is there, yeah. uh, we just, I, I mean, we're for, basically for the starting that, there also, you know, like architects using like bamboo, like, like you can use like the raw pole, you can use composites or you can use structured yeah. bamboo. It's like endless and we're just starting. Who knows what's going to pop up in five, 10, 20 years. Yeah. Bamboo so we are, we're also working on that. We have like a research thing on 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 making a bamboo uh, structural bamboo beams mm. uh, with with green glues and heat treatment in order mm -hmm. to produce like the, the greenest bamboo. Because that's another thing, you know. Uh, we 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 talk so much about like uh, bamboo is the greenest thing and whatever. But then if you look at the bamboo from China using formaldehyde based glues which we are currently doing as well, to be very honest. Yeah. But that's not the future. Yeah. Uh, this is because we need to be pragmatical. We need to and start further. Yeah. But uh, we're doing research on, on, on green blues, and that's what we need to be doing in, in two years. Um, but it's good you have it on uh, the radar and are looking for uh, better options. That's the important part, right? Yeah, that's that's the research. Yeah. That's the research that we are doing. With uh, we we got some funds for that, and that's like uh, yeah, being done uh, with some partners in the Netherlands and so on. So, um, cool. yeah. So yeah, cool. but those things need to be tackled. And the same thing with composite materials. You have these 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 these, these plates and these kind of things that are also quite toxic because of the raisins they're using mm -hmm. and then the people say bamboo is bad no 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 bamboo is really good but like you need to do the whole thing like <laughs> it's the whole value chain exactly. the bamboo. yeah it's, it's and we need good. transfer it has to be transparent so people can yeah. really take an educated choice and see oh this bamboo let's say bamboo uganda uh, produces like um real like healthy bamboo and like any other bamboo where i don't have like uh, transparency how it was made uh, how it was transported probably i'd better just leave it yeah. and yeah. choose a better one that's uh of course that's a important part of it <laughs> um yeah. and that's why we want to do that platform as well to kind of because that will be part, part of the platform that's mm -hmm. part of your your impact on your products is the glues yeah. you're using transport you're using yeah. absolutely everything uh, gives an impact and the glue is a big one for sure, within bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell me regarding the renewable energy um, and the uh, biochar you're using to uh, enrich fertilizer or basically to improve the soil um, activity and, and have like the bamboo growing faster? Or are you using it also in other um, uh, like coffee or other other crops? Uh, yeah, I, I can't tell you too much about it okay. because it's, it's very much at the initial stages. 
Um, basically, we had our first large container. Uh, I mean, remember, we only started in October. I know, so I know, I know. <laughs> we had our first large container, but we had a lot of waste. Uh, as everybody told us, like, you've got to have a lot of waste, and you know, we knew it, but then seeing it was like, oh, we have a lot of waste. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, so we, we started transforming that in inactive biomass, biochar, uh, mm -hmm. because otherwise it just starts to rot. Uh, but now we're really looking into the market for that. Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, we, even if we just get the carbon credits for it and then we can put it back on the plantations, that, that would make it not very interesting from a commercial perspective, but viable. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but we, we haven't reached that as well because like, yeah, it always turns out to take longer for these processes than what people- Of course, having. but I'm, I'm sure it's challenging, and, but it's it's a good approach. But, but, you got. Yeah, so we, we did send some samples to a fertilizer company here who is now doing research mm -hmm. uh, to, to see because, yeah, because yeah, biochar is, is a very interesting uh thing it's not a fertilizer on itself but it's like a sponge that retains the nutri nutrients in the water mm -hmm. um so but yeah but it also has a a very high ph value so you need to be careful not to be used burning the water. yeah yeah and, and not, not on food. seedlings probably rather big crops which are like strong and and stuff like that yeah, yeah. in my understanding it, it also depends on the type of crops some crops need high ph and mm -hmm. other need low ph and yeah i i, I i'm not like that's I'm pushing that to other people, but <laughs> I, yeah, you, you have to. <laughs> but yeah. I, I understand the general concept and I really like it. And uh, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and that would really be the way to go, I believe, um, to, to use biochar, to, to team up with a fertilizer company, make sure that it goes back to the fields. Um, and if we go to that agro model with the farmers, then I would very much like to introduce that as well to fertilize their mm -hmm. uh, their fields and so on. But that's that's it's it's initial stages, you know. You know, Thomas, that's circular economy. That's pretty exactly. pretty cool. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Another topic uh, we had uh, previously also mentioned. But if, when... if there's anybody who can help us with that, who has a lot of knowledge there, there. in the audience. Please give us a call. <laughs> exactly. So you're open for yeah. uh, collaboration or ideas. Uh, uh, the yeah. website is bambooganda.com. Uh, was it? Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, which is yeah. currently being yeah. hacked. But, <laughs> but you're going to update <laughs> it. It should be for, online, for sure. uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow or the day after. <laughs> okay, so as soon as this is going to be published, it's going to be online again, and everything will be fine. <laughs> so no worries. <laughs> yes. um, regarding the um, construction building, you're working with um, a, like a, a partner company, right? Which is a BK, BKK uh, VV Architects? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Euro Katz van Veen. It's yeah, it's a Dutch architectural firm that is very strong in ec in ecological construction. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, so he was on that first table uh two years ago. And uh yeah, and he's kind of doing that whole component for, for with Bamboo Gang. Yeah. And and basically you guys are already or are planning or are are you like already like selling bamboo to him for constructions in Uganda, or is he like is it is it the global uh, approach um, or is the local market? Um... No, at the moment it's really at the moment it's really Bamboo Uganda. Um, mm -hmm. So we're really focusing on Uganda. His main market was already in Uganda. Um, we are already uh, yeah we, we deliver treated poles. Uh, if he has any projects, um, we are now doing pin boo uh, for another project of his uh, here in Uganda um yeah we are working uh, so the whole research thing on the structural beams that is also in cooperation with bkvv they're kind of pulling they're kind of taking the forefront in that whole research component um yeah so that's that's kind of uh yeah it's really like a mutual collaboration that is mutually interesting for so so yeah there is interest for for bamboo construction already now in uganda this is uh interesting yeah, there is interest, but yeah, I mean, 
yeah, we did. We integrated it for in in a, for the Ministry of Education for some schools for teachers. Uh, so there's two large schools for teachers here that okay. now uh, integrated bamboo. That was mainly uh, decorative because um, like ceilings and and because we don't we and at the time we didn't have a proper processing facility. Now we're really looking into more structural projects. We are okay. investigating two larger lodges uh, because the tourism industry is quite large here. Um, yeah, we're doing like a, 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 an interesting project now, which is like a, a piece of art, which is uh, the Cosmo Golem from a, a Belgian artist who builds this all over the world. There's like 14 in the world. And so it's basically a six meter high uh, giant, uh, wow. which represents children's rights and so on. And so we're making the first bamboo one, which is also quite cool. cool. And, yeah. He's doing cool. the execution and, and we'll plot it with the pinbu and so it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be cool and and <laughs> what bamboo species are you mostly using currently or have you planted um yeah so we, we we're looking mainly at dendrocolumus asper that's what okay. we giant bamboo that's what some of the giant bamboo that's some of the pioneer bamboo growers here have planted uh, a couple of years back as well but it's not yet mature i mean there's mm -hmm. maybe 50 clumps have identified in the whole of Uganda uh, okay. of, of, of mature asper. Um, but it will take us another two two years, probably. Um, in the meantime, it's vulgaris. Uh, vulgaris. Okay. vulgaris yellow and the vulgaris green. Yeah. Uh, and people say it's not the best bamboo. You can't do construction with it and whatever. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, what a lot of people told me and what some labor laboratories have uh have, have confirmed now is that it's it it turns out to be a lot stronger in Africa than it is uh, when it grows in Asia. Mm, so and, depending and of the microclimate and the the soil, probably the result is yeah. different. That's interesting. Yeah. And and we we we're doing some serious construction with it. Like at our factory, yeah, we have like a platform at fifty meters high with some water tanks. We have a couple of tons up there, and it's wow. like yeah, it's very good. Like uh oh. yeah so we need to work with what we have and of course uh, yeah and yeah. It's, it's it's working quite well okay that's that's interesting so uh probably um yeah unexpected but i mean if it works it works right <laughs> exactly our point <laughs> yeah cool cool so um yeah i think we're uh, getting to the end uh, i wanted to mention that you're gonna if i'm not wrong you're gonna be at the bamboo expo in germany too Yes, so, very um, much looking forward to that. Cool. That's uh, in uh, like something like two months, one month, or very soon, for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. in about one month. Yeah, beginning of June. Yeah, so. we're already in summer here in Europe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, cool. And um, yeah, I don't know anything else. Maybe you want to um, mention right now, or um, you can. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very much looking forward to get more in touch with the uh, with the larger international bamboo uh, community. I think there's a lot of experience to share, mm -hmm. and 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 we I'm I'm very much looking forward to get some more inputs from 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 other people because yeah, uh, definitely. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to that uh, to that event. Interaction, absolutely, it's important. It's the first one in in Europe and um, like big one also because of the whole pandemic situation all that but um there is a lot of interest it's going to be very crowded it's two days and um yeah me too i'm really looking forward to it and uh, well thomas um thank you a lot uh, for your time and um see you very soon in germany then <laughs> thank you very much and thank you very much for your interest in bamboo uganda That's, thank uh, you for sharing